How do you run your agency in one hour per week? In two words, CEO dashboard. CEO dashboard is just a fancy way of saying tracking metrics and tracking the key metrics in your business is one of the most important things you can do. In this video, I'll be giving you an in-depth look at what the CEO dashboard is, why you should be using a CEO dashboard and how you can set up your own one and how to use it. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name's Sam and I help agency owners scale to 100K per month and beyond without sacrificing your freedom. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. The what? So as I said, the CEO dashboard is essentially just a fancy way of saying uh, having a page or a document um, that houses all of the key metrics that you want to track in your business. CEO dashboard might also be called a KPIs um, or key performance indicators. And this is again, a fancy way of basically saying uh, the metrics that you might be tracking on a week to week month to month basis, um, basically to make sure that your business is on track. Um, I often like to explain what KPIs are um, in contrast to what OKRs are. So an OKR is a uh, objective and key result. And so these are often misunderstood as your KPIs, um, but they're slightly different. So uh, OKRs are your targets. So if you imagine the OKR might be the destination that you're trying to get to, the end destination. And then the KPIs you could understand as the um, metrics on your dashboard that are telling you how much fuel you have, um, if your engine's overheating, all that kind of thing. So objectives are the, the big long things out of your reach that you're trying to achieve on the horizon um, and that are gonna push your business in a certain direction. Whereas KPIs is the overall maintenance of your business and the health of your business and the thing that's going to sustain your ability to actually move in that direction. The why. So why is it even important to track these metrics in the first place? Well, there's three key reasons. The first thing is that KPIs or the CEO dashboard is going to be able to tell you how well your different systems are doing in your business. Now by systems, I mean things like your onboarding system, your delivery system, your after sales system, um, your pre-sale system, all of these kind of things. Um, these are the key functions, the key systems in your business that are constantly operating. And by having a CO dashboard, you're able to actually put a number on how well they're doing. So an example of this might be that you might want to track the number of testimonials that you're collecting from your clients on a week to week, month to month basis. Now, this metric is going to indicate how well your delivery team, your fulfillment team are actually doing, because obviously the satisfaction of your client is going to um, encourage them to actually give you good testimonials, whereas dissatisfied clients are probably not going to bother or even give you a bad one. KPIs, the CEO dashboard also is a way of influencing your employees behavior. So in a second, I'll show you how you should be giving each of these metrics an owner. And once you assign a metric to a particular person, um, it's going to be their job to optimize for that number and make sure that they're delivering on the target. And this is a way of basically encouraging your employees um, to perform well. And uh, if they um, perform well, they're gonna be rewarded and it's gonna be sort of gamified for them. So they know they're doing specifically well because of the specific number they've reached. But also if they're underperforming, it's going to be motivating for them to get back to their number. Um, and it's a really good way of basically managing your team and making sure everyone's hitting those key points that they should be hitting on a re regular basis. Finally, the CEO dashboard is a great way to get a pulse on your business super quickly. So as I said, this is a video about how to run your agency in under one hour. And the reason the video is called that is because if you use a CEO dashboard, just by having a glance at all of the metrics that your team is putting in, as well as the comments that they're, they're putting next to underperforming metrics, you're able to quickly get a snapshot of how well your business is actually doing in the different areas and what your team is doing to improve on those areas that are underperforming. You can think of the CEO dashboard as the health of your business and each of the different numbers as the health scores. The how. So here are the four steps that you need to take to track uh, your key metrics in your CEO dashboard. The first step is to actually decide what you want those numbers to be. 
And the easiest way to do this is to, again, look at your systems and decide exactly what the number should be to tell you how well you're doing for that particular area. Now, it's slightly counterintuitive, but as I explained earlier, the number that is gonna dictate how well you're doing in a system is gonna kind of be at the end of the journey. So as an example, let's say I want to see how well my marketing is doing or specifically how well my lead magnets and my sales funnel is performing. Well, the metric I'd actually want to track for that might be the number of discovery calls I'm getting booked on each week. And the reason for that is because what's gonna dictate that number is actually how well my sales funnel is doing. So how well I'm getting people from my YouTube channel to sign on to a lead magnet, getting their information, taking them through sort of an email indoctrination sequence, and then eventually getting them to book onto a sales call. So use this method of reverse engineering your different systems to work out the key metrics that you should be tracking. You can also get input from your team, but I would always recommend to sort of do this as a top-down approach, come up with all the numbers and then come to your team and ask them if there's anything else that they would like to track or if they approve the metrics that you've decided. At the end of the day, they are gonna be the ones that are gonna be owning, owning these different metrics. And so if they think they are completely unreasonable or if they feel like they um, don't make sense then it's definitely important for them to have a bit of input. The second step is obviously to actually decide who those metric owners are and this will be in the same conversation as, as you're um, uh, designing what the metrics are so this is a bit of a two-fold thing but decide what the metric is and then also decide who's going to own it. Thirdly you're going to set the monthly target. Now we set at a monthly target because this is a nice scope of uh, how, to, how long it takes to actually achieve something um, without it being too short term or too long term. So we set at the month, but then we're actually going to track at the week. So set the monthly target. Again, this would be a conversation with the metric owner of what seems reasonable, but you want that monthly target to gradually increase, if not month to month, quarter to quarter. Uh, and so you're exponentially growing over time. And so the fourth and final step is to, as I said, track these numbers on a weekly basis. And one of the things that I would encourage you to do is have your team actually enter these numbers in manually. Now, this might be a bit controversial for some of you automation uh, uh, fans. Um, and I know that there will be ways to automate your KPIs and get the numbers into the CEO dashboard nice and easily. But actually having the metric owners enter in these different me metrics manually is going to mean ex they know what the numbers are. They're going to be top of mind. If you were to um, uh, message them and say, um, how, how are you doing uh, for discovery call bookings? They're going to have that number ready to go. So have them actually enter it in manually. And then in the next step, as I'll show you, you're going to ask them to uh, track how well they're doing. And then if they're underperforming, leave uh, comments. So over on Notion, we have a KPIs dashboard, and this is how all of those four steps will eventually manifest. So as you can see, we have all of the different, different KPIs, and then we have the owner. And at the moment, I've just put myself next alongside it, but you would have different owners for different um, KPIs. And then as you can see, we have a monthly target here that we have entered in, and this then dictates what the weekly goal is. So my monthly target for YouTube views was around 6,500. And so this is around 1,500 um, that this formula has worked out. And so, as I said, at the start of each week, maybe on a Monday, you would then review the last week of KPIs. And so whoever's in charge of the number of YouTube views would manually go to YouTube, go to the analytics, take a look at what that is, and then come to this log KPI, enter this and enter in the amount. And so all of your team can come ahead of maybe your team call and enter in these different pieces of information. And then the other thing they're gonna do is basically take a look at this status option. And this status option has got a specific hierarchy to this, which I'll explain now. So at the very top, we have lost. And so essentially what this is saying is based on what our current um, uh, metric is for this week and also the cumulative metric for this month, and based on what the monthly target is, if we feel we are completely lost and we're, when we're not gonna be able to hit the monthly target by the end of the month, then we would mark this off as lost. If, on the other hand, um, we are just slightly behind, so my monthly target is 6,500, um, my weekly goal is 1,500, and this week I did 1,300, last week I did 1,200, so I would say I'm slightly behind, then I would mark this off as behind. 
Now, if I am behind, but I actually have a plan on how to uh, rectify this, then I'd mark this off with as plan. And as you can see in this plan section, the reason I know I've marked it off as a plan is because in the comment section, I've written what I'm going to do to rectify this. So slightly behind on my YouTube numbers here. And so my plan is to essentially just record three more videos this Wednesday, and that's gonna allow me to get more traffic to my channel and hopefully more views, more watch time and more subscribers. Then going down the statuses, we have almost. And so essentially this will be as you come to the end of the month, if you didn't quite reach that 6,500 number, maybe I got 6,400. I wanna mark this off as almost, cause I don't wanna say that I completely lost it, um, but I didn't quite hit it. And then finally on track would say if um, I was on track and also if I achieve the metric at the end of the month, then I can mark that off as on track as well. So this is how this works. And then also within these different uh, columns, you can see we actually have some formulas working here and it's basically going to be marking it in red if I have under delivered from my weekly goal. But it's also showing me with this arrow figure here that I actually did slightly better than last week. So we also get a comparison on a week to week basis and a month to month basis um, inside of here as well. But the main thing is that using this status symbol, we're basically uh, encouraging the team to constantly monitor how well we're doing uh, with that monthly target in mind. And by using that planning feature, you're actually getting your team to actively think about ways to um, improve what they're currently doing and actually using initiative themselves before you even have to go ahead and, and give them feedback or, or give them input. And so as the CEO, that one hour a day would be dedicated to having that call with your team, getting this chart open in front of them and saying, okay, we're behind on this, uh, we're behind on that. What is your plan? Let's take a look in the column what you said. Okay, perfect. You've got a plan that's ready to go. And then if there is anyone, for example, I have this one here and I didn't have a comment and it says behind and we haven't got a plan yet, then that's the one thing that I can go in and as the CEO, perhaps help my team with and, and come up with ideas of how they can actually keep um, uh, driving towards that target. So if you found this video useful and you would like to get your hands on your own CEO dashboard, you can actually check out my Notion for Agencies template, which has been trusted by over 270 different agencies. And as well as having a KPI dashboard inside of there, we have amongst it um, client projects, client portals, company wiki, a CRM, as well as a whole bunch more. So if you'd like to uh, save some time and get this installed in your business today, you can use the link in the video description. And if you'd like to learn more about tactics and techniques for systematizing your business, you can check out my Systematize Your Agency mini course with a video here or here. And if you're enjoying these videos, please do consider giving this a like and subscribing to the channel for more. Until next time, bye-bye.